so you have beaten Ekkir, you feel strong and powerful. But I got to tell you, that first boss was just the beginning, and your journey in Valheim is going to get a lot harder. You might be wondering, so know what? I have an antler pickaxe, but what should I do? Well, that's what we are going to see in this episode. Hello, Mamati Baboon. Today, we are going to go deep into the Black Forest. We are going to review together its danger, how to harvest resources from it, including copper and tin, and what to do and build with these resources. Let's get started. The first step in this journey is going to be locating the Black Forest. Depending on the map, it could be very close to your initial spawn point, or you could be unlucky like me, it could be very far, and you build your first base in the opposite direction of the Black Forest. If you were lucky, or unlucky depending on how you see things, you could even have found the Black Forest before killing the first boss. You can see that I had to do a little bit of exploration before being able to find the forest. It should be easy for you to find when you enter the Black Forest, you will start to see fir and pine trees instead of beech and birch trees, and you will also see that the text on the minimap changes from the meadows to the black forest. And finally, you might notice you enter the forest by encountering bunches of grey dwarf, skeletons, or even a troll. And that brings us to my next point. The black forest is dangerous. Especially right now when you do not have a good armor yet, so enter it at your own risk and peril. Grey Dwarfs are not too hard, taken one by one, but in the Black Forest, they are usually in groups. You need to be very careful about trolls, they are deadly, fortunately they are very slow and you can kite them with a bow, and I would recommend killing them if you encounter them, as you can loot troll leather from them, and this will let us craft the best armor we can craft at the moment. As mentioned, the last kind that we will encounter in the Black Forest are skeletons. Like the Grey Dwarf, they are not too hard to kill one by one, but they will usually be in groups. When there are skeletons, it usually means there is a dungeon in the area, and we are going to cover that later in the video, because you do not want to do like me and enter a dungeon without preparation like a naked baboon and die. The first thing we will want to do in the Black Forest is to get some core wood. To get core wood, we are going to need to chop down pines. Pines are easily recognizable from fear, as they are much taller and do not have foliage at their base. Once we get enough core wood, we are going to craft a stack breaker, a weapon that will be very useful when we start to explore dungeons. It is a slow weapon, but it inflicts a good amount of damage and has a large area of effects. It will make dealing with group of enemies much easier. Now that we have a stack breaker, we can more confidently explore the Black Forest. And in addition to the core wood, the Black Forest will also give us access to two very important new resources, copper and tin. In the forest, you will come across this large slab of stones, and on some of them, you will see copper deposit. To harvest the copper, we just need to use the antler pickaxe that we crafted after killing egg tire. If you follow the coast or river in the Black Forest, you will inevitably find some tin deposit. As for the copper deposit, just use the antler pickaxe to harvest the deposit. From these deposits, we get copper and tin ore, but ore cannot be used directly. It needs to be smelted before it can be used for anything. To smelt these ores, we are going to need, wait for it, a smelter. Woohoo, who would have guessed? A smelter consumes coal, and to produce coal from wood, we are also going to need to build a charcoal kiln. The only issue with that is that the kiln and the smelter both need 5 certling cores to be built. And the only place we can find certling cores are in dungeons. So it's dungeon time, my friend. Before we go there, I really recommend to craft some armor. In my case, I am in full leather armor, and I even have one troll armor piece. I also recommend having a shield and a stack breaker. Dungeons can be found everywhere in the Black Forest, and they are usually stone structures or just underground entrances that takes you under earth. They are always guarded by skeletons, and once inside you will need a torch as there is no light. And these dungeons are just random connections of rooms. You will encounter skeletons that you should know how to deal with by now, and ghosts. Ghosts are a little more tricky, they have a huge pool of HP and hit hard. Use the stack breaker to deal with a group of skeletons, and use your shield and axe to kill ghosts. Don't forget to pick up yellow mushrooms, they can be eaten raw for 10 HP or 30 stamina, or they can be cooked if you already have a cauldron. You will also find chests that contain various loot, 
and look on the ground next to these stones when you encounter them. You will often find amber and amber pearls on the ground. And most important, you will find subtling cores. Dungeons can just have from just one or two to a dozen of them, so to have enough of them you will probably need to clear two or three dungeons. Alright, I now have enough subtling core, so we are back to our home. And I will be looking on here. And the smelter here. I can then add wood to the kiln and it will slowly produce coal. We can then take that coal, go on the right of the smelter and place it inside. And we can place copper or tin ore on the left of the smelter. The smelter is then going to produce ingots. It will take some time to smelt, so if you do not have enough patience, you can simply go to bed and everything is going to be smelted the next day. For me, I will use this time to start building a palisade around the smelter, as I do not want to be bothered by enemies or animals while I am smelting or forging. So now we have ingots. That's nice, but what to do with them? Well, ingots can be used in the forge to produce more advanced items. So let's build that. But first, I realized that I don't like where I placed the smelter and the kiln. So I am going to rebuild them on the other side of our yard. And the reason I'm going to do that is because the forge, like the workbench, needs to be covered by a roof. We are going to place it here and let's use it. And now you are going to say, what? We went through all that just to be able to produce a butcher and a copper knife? Don't worry my friend, relax. Most of the components craftable at the forge requires bronze. To produce bronze, we will need one ingot of tin and two ingots of copper. And once we got bronze ingot, it will open a bazillion of new recipes. You will probably be overwhelmed by the number of things we can now craft, and my advice on the first item to craft would be to craft a bronze axe. The reason is twofold. First, you can see that most of the items that we can now build requires fine woods, and to get fine wood, we need to chop down birch trees, and these trees are too hard for the flint axe. The second reason is that the bronze axe is also a good weapon that will be an upgrade to the flint axe in combat. Getting a bronze armor is also a good idea, but you can go crazy on an entire design and improve your home if you want. So me, I am going to get some fine wood and I will let you decide what you want to do. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the video and see you soon!